Here he is again. Mikel Arteta. Hi, Mikel. Yeah. yeah so this, uh, I don't want to give any spoilers away, but the, yeah, the season was the season. Yeah, it was the season. That's, that's right. What do you mean it's my fault? I'll have you know, Sandro Tonelli and Gal Hart needed to be sold. Hello and welcome to another video brought to you by the good people at FM Wonder Kids. Today we are reviewing season number 14 of the Wolverhampton Wonder Kids saga. Now if you like these videos, smash a like on the video for me, that helps the channel out a lot. And if you're not subscribed, what are you doing? Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Um, if you, By the way as well, if you want to play this game yourself, that's available to the patrons. So if you head on over to Patreon, you can actually download this game and play it yourself. Anyway, today we're reviewing season number 14. And there's a lot of twists and turns, a lot of mistakes will be made, a lot of things done right, a lot of things done wrong um, by myself. A lot delegated out, obviously, to Mikel Arteta more than usual, more delegated out to our director of, directors of football, more delegated out to our technical directors. We've got huge backroom staff now who are more than capable of doing the job for us so that um, we can step away, step back, look after our daughter, go on holiday for a whole season, come in and manage the finals. So this is the, this is the dream which we're aiming for. Um, we're almost there. We're almost there. Um, but a few mistakes were made this season which we will learn from and I'll talk you through those, it's not a problem. Um, and a lot of twists and turns like I say, so let's um, go straight into it and we'll review what happened in terms of what were the outcomes in the competitions. So let me just find the review page here. Wolves had been expected to make much of the Premier Division title running but ultimately flattered to deceive and qualification for continental competition would have done little to detract from the feeling that they should really have performed better. I mean, I'd agree with that, definitely. Um, essentially, we were runners-up in the league, you can see that here, and we were runners-up in the Champions League as well, you can see that there. We didn't win an FA Cup, we won the Super Cup, so we did win a trophy, it's not a trophy-less season, uh, so we won the Super Cup. We lost in the fifth round of Huddersfield in the FA Cup, we were out of the group stage in the Club World Championship, which I wasn't really aware of, to be honest with you. Uh, like I say, we delegated a lot of the season out. Uh, so we'll check that one out. Runners up in the in the league, we'll go, we'll do a deep dive into that. And the Champions League final was obviously up live last week. So if you haven't seen that, go and check that out. It's a very dramatic game. Um, so yeah, I'd agree with that um, summer, summary. Uh, there's a lot of... So let's go to the transfer screen to start with. So... Again, we tried to um, trim the squad down a little bit. There was a lot of uh, wage budget being sapped away by players who weren't first team players. Uh, so we sold some players, basically. We sold some players. Uh, people 30 or over got a few of those out the door as well. Uh, so here it is. So we actually made money again in the transfer market. So I haven't got my calculator out here, but that looks like a net spend of minus 75 million, to be honest with you. So we've absolutely smashed it for the club in terms of making money again, which is good. And we got the wage budget down as well. So let me talk you through that a little bit. So we sold Dembele. Uh, so it hasn't been first choice really ever, um, but does come on and do uh, do bits for us. But we sold him because he's now 30 years old and his pace is going a little bit as well. Okay, So he did a really good servant to the club. Uh, he's gone to Huddersfield in the end. They actually knocked us out of the FA Cup, so we'll show you that. Uh, <laughs> um, I haven't looked at that, actually. I hope he didn't score. Well, it is what it is, isn't it? But he's left-footed, obviously. He's a great player. We trained him to play left-back. Uh, I wonder if he's still playing there for Huddersfield. We'll have a little look at him because uh, he was great for us. Yeah, he's quite good at left-back now. Inside forward on the left as well. So Dembele was a great servant to the club, but he was uh, his wages were high and he wasn't um, around the first team, really. So Malinowski uh, left on a free. So a couple of mistakes we made last season were not being in control of our... Uh, contracts enough uh, so a couple of people walked out for free just because we weren't aware or we didn't get the contracts done in time um, and then by, but before we knew it the guys were unhappy they were in their last year of the contract and bang January comes and uh, some teams have snapped them up so that happened with Genkar we spoke about this last season 
and he was the boy. He was the boy for us. He was the future, and it was really sad to see that we lost him to Real Madrid. <sighs> such a such a disappointing mistake by us. Uh, he, he's excellent with that vision passing. So that, it is what it is. We lost him for free. And Diaz as well. He was out on loan. He's unhappy. Um, and yeah, big wage zapper. But great, great footballer. Great defender. Almost great. Not really head in the marking, but good mentals, good physicals. And yeah, then we sent Sid out on loan. You know, both our second choice goalkeepers, or our second and third choice goalkeepers, were unhappy, and both were in the last year of the contract. We managed to tie Sid down to a further extension, um, but Slattery looks like we're going to lose him, unfortunately. So that's Sid, who went out on loan to Norwich. Kongs, we sold for five million. Um, never really made it into our first team just because of this, basically, not fast enough. So Kongs went for five million to Watford. Husic went out on loan, one of our uh, new youngsters. Promising prospect for the future. Look at this. He's almost got all the 16s here. And he's only 18 years old. So he'll come into the fray next season. I have no doubt about that. Because we have, like I say, we have minimised our squad a little bit. So we do uh, we do need players. Um, Zaros. Oh, I don't even know how we lost this guy. Uh, oh, this was... So this was one of the mistakes we made. Is we delegated out to our director of football control of the under-23s transfers ins and outs and he sold this guy for 11 million to Paris Saint-Germain and he's great look at him defender both feet fast strong I suppose Markin's only 12 but 11 million he's one for the future how old is he he's only 20 so he's going to get better so we took took back control of that I'll show you that now after I've done these last three because uh, you might be shocked to see these last three Tonali we were trying to get rid of Tonali all season because of the wage budget thing should we have kept him yes we probably should have was it a mistake yes I think it was and then Liverpool come in with a bid for him on the last day of the transfer market and uh, we accept it we go for it now Tonali did play a few games for Liverpool it's not like he was first choice but I'll tell you who was first choice for Liverpool and this is a huge twist and turn in the books if that's a phrase at all. Where's the squad here? Players. You like this one. Look at this guy here. Defensive midfielder. Ruben Neves. What a traitor. He played 45 games for Liverpool and they won the league. Liverpool won the league by two points and we came second. And Neves was a huge part of that, playing 45 games, scoring 15 goals, probably from free kicks and stuff. Oh my gosh. And creating 11 assists. 7.68 was his average rate. And he was their best player by the look of it. Which is frustrating. Obviously, he didn't come straight from us. But his mentals have got better. His physicals have obviously got worse. He's 36, 36 now. But his mentals have got better. And his technicals have got better. But his physicals have got worse. But just goes to show in FM20, if you've got a player like that, keep hold of him. Because... You can play him in a different position or even in that defensive midfield position. He doesn't need to have too much physicals uh, and he can still perform for you. So, yeah, we sold him to Milan. It went on a free transfer in the end because we couldn't just couldn't get anyone to pay money for him. And then Liverpool bought him for £8 million when he was 36 and he was becoming their best player. So, lesson learned there in terms of Tonali and Neves, to be honest with you. They both ended up at Liverpool. Liverpool ended, ended up winning the league. Tonali played 12 games, but came off the bench 32 times, probably for Neves, to be fair. Probably for Neves. And that is heartbreaking, to be honest with you. So it is what it is. And we also got rid of Galhit, and guess where Galhit went? Galhit also went to Liverpool. Excuse me. Back too many pages there. So Galhit, again, final day of the season. We've been trying to sell him all transfer window. Liverpool coming with a bid. 34 million. We take it. Galhit was 30, 30, still really good. He's 31 now. He was still actually really good and would have been first choice for us. Um, but we wanted to sign because he was 30, basically. Um, and again, it's not as if he was first choice for Liverpool. I mean, he started 16 games. We scored 15 goals. I mean, that if we didn't sell him, Galhart and Tonali, we would have won the league and they wouldn't have won the league, basically, I think. Well, maybe you could argue other players were, for them would have stepped in and played that role. Could have happened. Veloso as well then. Very late bid again from United. Um, 
and we sold him to United. Veloso, we should have kept one of these guys. We definitely should have kept Veloso or Tonali. Um, or actually, it's not that we should have kept them. It's that we should have replaced them properly. And that was uh, my mistake. And I'll take, I hold my hands up and I'll take all the blame for that. We thought we had signed this guy from Arsenal. And what is his name? I can't remember. Ban, Banny or something. Uh, let me just find the guy. I'll go to Arsenal's uh, page and I'll find the guy who I thought we'd signed. I thought it went through, but I had no idea why. It was like a deadline day decision, you know, so Tonali had gone, Veloso had gone, Gallagher had gone, all on the last day of the transfer um, market. And I was obviously sniffing around for replacements for him, younger guys, you know. And um, this guy, I thought we had signed this guy, but Jude Bellingham was playing there, by the way. Oh, we, we might do a video actually next week on where are they now. The guys who did play for us, where are they playing now? So Jude Bellingham's at Arsenal. But that would be quite good. So we got the class of 2020, where are they now video coming up for you next week. But the guy that I thought we'd signed, where is he? Where is this man? There he is, Robbie Bain. He played 10 games for Arsenal at an average rating of 7.19. That's his graph. He would have been a centre midfielder in the role, in the mould of Tonali. Look at that passing, vision, first touch. 40 million we got him for. But I don't know why it didn't go through. I really don't know why that didn't go through. All I know is the deadline had passed, and before I know it, we didn't have the guy. Maybe he didn't want to come to us or something like that. But I, do, I can't answer that question. Uh, we had another guy lined up as well for that position who we didn't confirm because we wanted Bane instead. Bane. But um for some reason it didn't go through and that cost us ultimately because if you watch the last game in the Champions League final we had to play Sega's in deep lying and playmaker role and that's not his position. We had to play a, one of the young guys in the attack and midfield centre position. And um we lost by a, we lost by one goal in the last minute so uh, it's a year of mistakes, to be honest with you, but we learn from them and we go again. So talking about the ins then, guys we brought in, all youngsters uh, for the future. Fluge from Hoffenheim um, is a striker who is highly rated by my scouts. Uh, he's not quite good enough yet to get in the team because he's not fast or strong and he's not really good at finishing yet, but he's got some huge mentals and good first touch, etc., so um, he's classed as a deep lion forward, but yeah, look at that potential there. So that's good. Husic, have we spoke about this guy yet? I don't think so. Or is this the guy that went on loan? Yeah, Husic went on loan to Sheffield United. He'll come into the team next season, I'm sure, in that right midfield position. Schlupenbach, in very much in the same mould as Husic. It's going to be great. Richard Reese came in in January. Um, definitely one for the future. Very young here, 16-year-old left-footed striker. So these guys will be coming through in a couple of years. Um, so just boosting up the youth side of things, really. Belgian 16-year-old. But really what we needed to do is sign Robbie Bain. And it didn't go through. Um, so we'll have a little look at the squad now. And we'll show you what the first team is kind of looking like. Uh, this is a bit of an ugly screen, isn't it? We'll show you the reports. Team reports. Assistant reports. Squad depth, sorry. So here it is. If it loads up. Bear with me a second. So here it is. Ali Smith then. For me, I'll go through the way I would do it. So what number one and number two in each position. Ali Smith and then Greenwood. Um, or potentially Fatty. But I'd go Ali Smith and then Greenwood as my two strikers. Fatty and then one of the young guys on the inside four position. Or Greenwood maybe. Um, Schlupenbach. Decent for me in the position. Um, Segas then at attacking midfield centre. And apart from that, I would probably go Ali Smith, and then you just have to have that extra striker, spare striker like Flu like Fluge, who isn't really ready yet to be fair, or Fatty goes in and one of the young guys comes in here, etc. Right wing then, we're playing with a winger now. Um, so this was the kind of the weakest part of our team, to be fair. Uh, we were playing the new guy, De La Rue, who's going to be great. Oh, he's actually quite good already. But at the start of the season, he was a little bit worse than this. So his crossing and dribbling has gone up. So that's fantastic for a winger as well. Wonder kid, look. So we're happy with that. We want his pace to get better. Hopefully he's going to get faster. Uh, that's Stark, sorry. That's the number two Stark. He's was never. He was been in and around the first team for a while, about 25 years old, out on loan a couple of times. 
Uh, he's never really done it, but he's good for a backup in that position as a, as a winger, we think. Yamas and Garcia then, deep line playmaker and a box-to-box. -box. Yamas, we know about. He's been there for centuries now. 26. Garcia uh, broke into the first team in the last couple of years from the youth setup. The work rate, vision, positioning, he's our box to box, decision determination. Yeah, we're more than happy with those two. But behind that is where the, the problem lies. Yes, we can play Rojo as our box to box. He's not really attacking, but he is good in terms of uh, physical and defending. Um, but apart from that, you're looking at the youthies then. Bradshaw, who is a 19 year old English player who could make it, he might not make it. He had to play the Champions League final in the end. Segers, like we say, we have to step him back into the deep line playmaker. So that's a problem for us, that position there. But something to deal with now in the transfer market. Del Hurts and the new guy then, Gil uh, Really getting a lot better now. Oh, look at that. Whew, look at those physicals. So that's good. Hoy and Bergman as our centre-back partnership. But I think Mikel Arteta prefers Ramos. But we know these guys, they've been there for a while. Hoy, excellent, 29 years old now. Bergman, getting into the swing of things, 27. Kyrgyzstan and Del Ati. Kyrgyzstan's been unhappy all season. We might end up losing him. I think he's not got long left on his contract. We'll see what happens, but we're more than happy with Del Ati as a backup in that position. Fayat then, as a goalkeeper, he's still only 27. He's world class. He's the now the captain of France. He's won the World Cup with France at least once. Um, might, they might have won it twice. Slattery, excellent backup, but we might end up losing him because he's been unhappy. Mikel Arteta hasn't been playing him. And he's in his last year of the contract. But we've got Sid out on a low. Tactics then, we've changed uh, slightly. we reset it a little bit to more of a Gagan press. Um, in January, halfway through the season, we did that. Uh, we were second in the league and we thought we want to mix something up a little bit see if we could get that first position. It didn't quite work out. So we've gone to a Gagan press with a winger. We've gone positive rather than attacking. That's pretty much it. It's a Gagan press, winger. We've kept some of the ind individual instructions like shoot less often for our full backs. Um, we haven't got a more direct pass in there, which we probably should pull in or we probably will put in. Um, the future, I will edit that now actually. More direct passing for my deep line playmaker. I'll save that. Save. Where's the save button? Where is the save button? Right down the bottom. So if you want to get hold of any of these tactics, most of them are available for the patrons. So the, the treble winning tactic is over there if you want to become a patron. And the Man United tactic, I think, as if it's not gone up already, it'll be up in a couple of weeks. But there's also old Man United ones on there, which are great. This one is called the Wolves Gagan Press Reset. So I'll just save that for you. Like I said, if you want to become a patron, thank you very much. Firstly, thank you very much to all the patrons. Uh, but all the tactics are over there, as well as all the shortlists that we use for our Monday videos. So head on over. It's a good way to support the channel. Uh, but don't forget to smash that like button as well, to be fair. So this is the formation then. It's very similar, but apart from those changes that we said we made. Ah, oh, shit. Why have I got Hoy as a ball-playing defender? Hopefully he hasn't been playing him there. Too many jellicers. So he needs to be a centre-back. And he needs to be the ball-player. Save. This is a problem when you create a new tactic. Sometimes you don't go as... Oh, I'll tell you what I didn't do. I didn't put the set-pieces in there either. Okay, so we'll put the set-pieces back into the tactic. I won't do that now on screen because it's a ball ache. But we'll put the set pieces back in and we'll see how it goes next season. We'll keep that for next season then. Uh, so that's it. That's the tactic. So the uh, standard passing, extremely high. No uh, specific way of playing in terms of the final third. Playing out of defence though, obviously. Um, the counter press and the counter slightly higher. We've, we've put a def defensive line, a defensive offside trap in there as well. So that's that. Uh, we've done the team report, the staff then. So let's have a look at our staff because this is interesting. What's the best screen to look at? The coaching team, here we go. So Mikel Arteta, obviously our assistant manager, 
have a little look at his attributes, absolutely fantastic. That's what you want from your assistant manager. You want him to be able to judge the potential and the ability. You want him to be able to motivate your players. So we're happy to delegate everything out in terms of match days to Mikel Arteta. We go on holiday, we come back, how have you done? Boom, let's play the final for you, Mikel. That's how we roll here in Wolverhampton Wonder Kids. So we're happy with that. Dan Ashwood, head of youth development, great stats, working with youngsters, yeah, all the ability and potential judging. And then we've just got some obviously just normal coaches. So if we look at medical team, scouting and transfer team. So director of football, brand new director of football this year, Sergio Ramos. If you follow me on Twitter at FMWKDS, you will have seen this already. But Sergio Ramos, we've signed as our director of football. <laughs> look at those stats, determination, man management, motivating. So he's insane. Um, we lost Ingle Tarr, who was great, but the contract ran out. Um, so he left. So that's something we so something we have looked at, and Michael Ball came in new as well because we lost that other guy. Great stats here for Michael Ball for technical director. And what we will do now, we'll go through how we're delegating most of this out in terms of responsibilities because we made some mistakes. We had some things which were too much delegation, and some things which weren't enough for us. So we'll go through that now. So responsibilities, board. Obviously, you can't change the board responsibilities. They're basically hired and firing me. Okay. But they haven't done that yet because we're obviously just such doing a, doing such an amazing job. Staff then, I handled team selection. But to be fair, I'm on holiday a lot of the time. I can't believe the board haven't sacked me because I'm on holiday. Last season, I was on holiday for almost 100 percent of the time. Team selection for the under 23s is the under 23s manager. He's a new guy actually, Marco Podesto. So he was hired by my team, by my recruitment team. And so was my under 18s manager. He's pretty decent, so they've done a decent job there. And there it is. So recruiting directors, obviously that's the chairman. You can't change. Oh, oh, you can. Oh, no, I've changed that. So I put the chairman in charge of hiring and firing the director of football now and the technical director. Because like I say, we lost our director of football because of a contract issue, which I wasn't aware of. it ran down because I'm on holiday most of the time. And the same happened with our director of our technical director and our director of football, both. Same thing happened with both of them. So I've made it the chairman's job, which is cool because you can delegate upwards. The chairman now take control of that. So I'm happy with that. That's a positive uh, development. Hiring and firing the loan manager then. I don't even know what the loan manager does or because I've tried using the loan manager and he just fails at getting people out on loan and uh, it's just a joke so I might um, read that article over on FM blog maybe do a video about that because that is frustrating hiring and firing the head of youth development then a chairman hiring and firing the chief scout chairman hiring and firing Wolves coaching staff that shouldn't be the chairman that should be a technical director for me hiring and firing medical staff technical director hiring and firing Wolves scouting staff technical director Under 23, why are these all chairman? Somebody's changed these. Has my chairman or my director of football changed these? Hire and fire in the under 23 manager. Maybe I changed them to chairman. Um, but I want that to be my technical director. To be managing the staff of the under 23s. Either that or the director of football. But I'm, I think I'm concentrating technical directors on staff. And directors football and players, I think, is how I'm managing it. Recruitment of under-18 staff. This should not be chairman, so I don't know why this has all changed. Under-18 staff, that goes to director of... No, sorry, that goes to technical director. Bang. Bang. Technical director. Oh, it's getting quite a long-winded process now, isn't it? Hiring and firing involves under junior scouting staff, technical director. Coaching courses. Decide whether Wolverhampton staff should undertake coaching courses. Again, that should be technical director for me. Decide under staff undertake courses. Loan manager. I don't want my loan manager doing anything. He's useless. Technical director can do all those. Okay, confirm that. Okay, contracts. Why is my chairman doing everything? Has he taken control? I don't know why my chairman's doing everything. 
Renewing director of football contract. Yeah, chairman, I'm happy with that. Renewing technical director's contract. Yes, I'm happy with that. Okay, so my chairman isn't doing anything. Renewing the loan manager's contract. Head of youth development. This is crazy. So, technical director. Youth development contract. Chairman. Yeah, I'm happy with that. To be fair, I can't my chairman do that. No, okay. Uh, renewing this chief scout contract. Technical director. Technical director. Maybe it was because we lost our technical director at some point because of the contractual issue and then it just flipped back to the chairman. Renewing Wolverhampton Wonders staff. Technical director. Wolverhampton Wonders under 23 managers contract. So this for me, under 23 managers, could, could be director of football, but I'm keeping it technical director because I want my technical director in charge of all the staff and my director of football in charge of the players. Yeah, makes sense? Okay, so I didn't anticipate that I would have to change all of these live whilst recording for you guys, but um, there it is. Advice and reports. I generally don't look at this. It's on holiday. So responsibilities, staff, scouting. Chief scout, happy with that. Transfers and contracts. This is where the director of football comes into play. And this is where we had made the mistake last season. So initiating player science for Wolves, me. Negotiating player science for Wolves, me. Finalising player science for Wolves, me. So you don't want to change that because then you don't have any control over your team. Initiating player, literally, like you don't know who's coming in, who's going. Initiating player sales for the Wolverhampton Wanderers, me. So ins and outs, basically, for the first team, me. Now, finding players, finding and developing young players was previously me, but I put that out to Dan Ashworth as well. So if he can find any gems for me, great. Head of youth development. Negotiating player signings for the under-23s, head of youth development. Finalising player signings for the under-23s, head of youth development. Hmm. That, I might change that in the future, but we'll leave that for, for now. Handling incoming offers for team and the under 23s. Now, this is what we did wrong. We delegated this out last time. We don't want to do that. We want to handle the incoming offers ourselves because we don't want players being sold that we don't want being sold, for essentially. essentially. Find and sign young players for the future. Again, Dan Ashworth, the head of youth development, can, can control this. But also, obviously, I will be doing it also. Handle incoming offers for the under-18s. I'm going to take control of that, actually. Negotiate player sales. I'll probably take control of all this. Yeah, I'll take control of those, finalising the, the sales, because we don't want players getting sold that we don't want getting sold. Okay, so that's basically it then. So maybe the... I'll change, I'll probably put the director of football back doing a few things because he's not doing anything at the moment. Um, okay, so that's that. That's how we are delegating. So I hope you're still with me. It's going to be a very long video now. So that's that. Um, competition, scouting. That's basically it then for the video, guys, to be honest with you. The finances we'll have a little look at. Um, the under-23s are basically empty. The under-18s are empty. We'll see if Dan Ashworth and anyone has brought someone in now in a second. But because of our absolutely fantastic work with the finances and the transfer budgets, we've literally got loads and loads of money in the club. Our wage budget, we've got a huge surplus. And our transfer budget, we've got a huge surplus every year. We had 500 million, I think, to spend last year. And we didn't spend it all because we didn't think we needed to. We made a mistake there in not getting our centre midfielder in time. And that was basically the only mistake we made, I think. We're continuing to sign young players under 23s. And yeah, we're going, we go again next season. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Sorry if it's been a bit of a long one. We'll see you next week. We might do a Where Are They Now video or there could be a, a whole new season review. Guys, thanks. Smash a like. See you soon. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you're new.